Alrighty. Watching. Forget the name of the episode. Ah, Q2. Star Trek Voyager. Season, I forgot. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> There's the dark remote. I've crawled through certifiably in games YouTube channel. And I saw his video about trans warp and uh, uh, coaxial warp and and the the, the warp ten from the uh, uh, the Delta Flyer bit and the Borg subspace conduits and the uh, Crested Neck Idiot subspace conduits I forgot their names <laughs> fucking Dumb. Just dumb. So. Want to. Go back on this video. And show a clip. And point it to it. And say. I realized. After I saw this. For the umpteenth time. Certifiably in game. You didn't say nothing about it. Go back faster. There. Voyager's locked out of the trying to be. It's so predictable. They're opening some sort of spatial rift off their port bow. It's disrupting the tractor beam. Compensate. And there they go. That bit. If I'm not mistaken, which I haven't done any research on this as far as the lore and uh, technical specs for Starfleet ships in the Star Trek universe. If I'm not mistaken, there should be a record of every key log and all the sensor data from what Q Jr. did while he was mortal in a human form opening that spatial flexor as he called it. And they should be able to replicate that and use that to just jump from point to point. Pending power consumption versus range output from power input. As well as the like, capacities of the technology that they're limited to. But all in all, hey, certifiably in-game. Why don't you do some theory crafting with that one? I'd like to see you make a video about it. That interspatial flexure that Q Jr. did. That would be nice and tits. Definitely nice and tits. Which is an apt reference even in itself. Considering what Q did to Seven of Nine. Earlier in the same episode. He's incorrigible. Takes a bit after his father, doesn't he? Well, that's it. That's that's um a an idea pitch, a proposal of sorts. Ah, fucking take it and run with it. Certifiably in game. Fucking take it and run with it. <laughs>